Hello and welcome to the Intel with Greg Cosell. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan from Inside the Birds. And of course, joining us as always from NFL Films is Greg Cosell. And today we are going to break down NFL free agent linebackers off the ball linebackers. And this will complete our defensive look at NFL free agents. We have done defensive backs. We have done defensive linemen, edge rushers, I should say. And this uh, episode right here will be devoted to off-ball linebackers. Hey, Greg, does it feel like we say this every year? Off-ball linebackers, kind of a revolving door for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I know they're probably going to pay a lot of money for them, right, Adam? They're going to really good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this year, well, look, it, linebackers. Yeah, boy, they haven't really done that. And, and, and if, you, if you're a team that's looking for an off-the-ball linebacker, it's kind of an interesting list, kind of top-heavy. Uh, there's uh, The first guy we're going to talk about in a second here is uh, one of my favorite guys, just because he came out of nowhere to become a player. But this position, and, and specifically when we talk Eagles, it's been such a revolving door, as Jeff said. And obviously you have the draft. They don't have to do anything in free agency. We know they're going to, but they don't have to. And if you're a team that's looking for an off-the-ball linebacker, you're probably more likely going to look towards the draft, but there are a couple gems here. Absolutely. I know. I, I'm sure we'll get to. Uh, there's one guy in particular I really like. I would think he would not be super expensive, but I think he's a really good player. Well, okay. we'll let you, Jeff, uh, lead us here, and when we get to it, we'll uh, we'll do that. Yes, and just so our listeners and viewers know that with free agency beginning next Monday, and us having this episode and one more to do that's going to uh, preview the offensive skill position players we're going to drop two of these episodes this week so this one drops uh, that people are listening to now and then later this week either Thursday or Friday we'll have the offensive skill position players to go through with Greg so that you know have a little shelf life and people can absorb the content before the circus begins next week on Monday with the start of the legal tampering period which as we all know is basically the start of free agents agreeing to terms with other teams. So a lot to get through. Uh, there are a decent number of off-ball linebackers. This is a position where the Eagles are seemingly addressing every year, usually with guys on one-year deals. Every once in a while, Greg, they will bring in a linebacker for a little bit more than the market value. Adam and I were talking about Nigel Bradham a couple of years ago uh, when they were building up toward a Super Bowl run, when they got him from the Bills. And there have been a couple of guys uh, but this is generally a position that the Eagles look to in free agency for one-year stop gaps while they draft. They did draft N'Kobe Dean. They have to wait and see how he develops. He was injured all last year. So so let's talk in general. I want to start with someone that you like. You said there's a guy you like that may not break the bank. So let's get into that guy and see if he's a fit for the Eagles. Oh, you want me to tell you who it is? I do. Yeah. I do. That's yeah. what we call a teaser in the business, my friend. Oh, well, it's uh, Blake Cashman. Wow. Oh, Blake Cashman. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, he played at Houston this year. Came out of Minnesota a few years back. Um, thought his tape was really good this year. Um, he's one of those guys, too, that would probably not be overly expensive. Although you never know, because you never know how different teams value off-the-ball linebackers. We saw that uh, the two Super Bowl teams had very good off-ball linebackers. Even uh, one of the final four teams, the Ravens, had have two really good off-the-ball linebackers. Um I doubt the Eagles would be in the market for Patrick Queen. Um, I think he'd probably be too expensive. Uh, but Blake Cashman um, is a really solid player. He's a three-down player as well. Um, I just think, you know, based on tape, that he's a, a good player. And um, I, I actually met his agent and talked to him quite a bit at the uh, at the Combine. So um, uh, he had indicated there was interest. Now, I don't know what that means. Agents say, as Adam knows, and you know, Jeff as well, that those conversations, you know, they go anywhere when you talk to agents. But um, but I really like Cashman's tape a lot. So the, the one knock on him, and it, thankfully it hasn't, it's been a while, but he, he's been on IR five times in his career. Yeah, that's so been a problem. You worry about that. Yeah, yeah, you worry yeah. about that. And, Which is yeah. one reason why he probably wouldn't go on or, you know, a big time contract relative to perhaps some others. Right now, the last time he was on IR wasn't, it, it's been a while since uh, yeah. the last time he went on IR was in October of 21. So at least he's been healthy lately. Yeah. He does turn 20 in, in May. This will be his one right at the apple, so to speak, Jeff. So, you know, if you're a team that's looking for an inside linebacker background of 34, he's played in 34 before, by the way, with the Jets mm -hmm. um, or 43, like Houston plays. You like that, that he's played in different schemes. And Greg's right. I, he's not going to cost a lot of money. He's a very underrated player. I'm so glad you brought him up. Number 53, by the way, for the Texans. 
Yeah, yeah, I just remember player. when he was at Minnesota. He was a t- I believe that's where he went. Minnesota. He went to Minnesota. He was kind of a tackling machine there. Tackling machine. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You get a lot of those tackling machines out of those Midwestern uh, Big Ten schools like Wisconsin and Iowa and Minnesota there. Yeah, so uh, that, yeah. that may start to change with the way college football is going and the schools that are in the Big Ten, you know, now. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, but no, he's, he's just a, one of those really solid football players. Yeah, I agree. Greg, definitely. Go ahead. Yeah, Adam. The one guy, the one guy I'm going to bring up here is a guy that so many people thought was going to be an absolute superstar, and that's Kenneth Murray. What what, what happened to him with the yeah. Chargers? You know, it's funny because I really liked Murray coming out of Oklahoma, and I'll be the first to admit that I actually liked him more I, than uh, than Patrick Queen. And obviously, his career has not been quite as good, just because I thought the physical traits were so high level. I mean, he's bigger than Queen. Um, he probably runs as well or better if you're just talking about running in a straight line. I mean, I don't remember 40 times, you know, back for, from that year. But um, but I really thought Kenneth Murray had a chance to be a really, really good linebacker. He's had moments now, Adam. I mean, it's not as if he's a poor player, you know, sure. but um, he just hasn't become the kind of player that you can count on. Now, my sense is that he probably doesn't see things as well as you would, you would like him to see things. Um, And he doesn't react as quickly, but he's got really strong physical and athletic traits. And now you get into how you teach him, what kind of system you play. um, Can you help him with that? You know, there are players and I can't think of any offhand this moment. We're just kind of talking ball right now, but there are linebackers who can be good players without having to ha- have high level key and diagnose, you know, it depends on how they're deployed, what you ask them to do. Um, you know, but, but Murray certainly, I mean, he's six, three, he's two forty ish, maybe even a little more. Um, he's, he's runs well, he's got some physicality to him. So he'd be a really interesting player. Um, it all depends on, you know, how you see him. And, and we have no idea, of course, how the Eagles see him, but, but, you know, I, I, I thought he'd be a really good player. So up to this point, I'm probably more wrong than right, but the physical traits are there. Yeah, we know the Eagles liked Kenneth Murray, but we also know they infamously passed on him in 2020 to take Jalen Rager out of TCU and then try to sort of appease the defensive coordinator in the third round by taking Davion Taylor, another very highly athletic trait guy who uh, whose linebacker awareness and lack of pedigree really hurt him and right. no longer with the team. Uh, so it is a name to watch, especially if Kenneth Murray struggles, Greg, mean that, you know, it's week two of free agency, week three, and people just aren't seeing what they wanted. And he becomes one of those value one or two year deal guys. Yeah, that's a great point, Jeff. I mean, you'll see a guy like that. If he gets signed very early in free agency, that means people think, hey, this guy can become a player in our system. But if he's kind of hanging around out there, then you know that people see the warts more than they do the positives. I want, I want to ask you about two guys in one here because I don't want to bury the lead for some of our listeners who may not, who either follow the rest of the league as much as the Eagles or uh, follow other teams. So we should talk about Patrick Queen. Uh, he was a first round pick of the Ravens. It looks he like was. he'll go out yeah, to uh, to free agency. So he's one of the big names that are out there, but also Frankie Louvu from the Panthers. Ah. Uh, that's one of Adam's favorite guys. And he's not getting a lot of play, by the way. I yeah. spoke to his agent as well. Um that surprises me. We'll start with Luvu. I've always liked Frankie Luvu, and I think the tape is really good. And I'm surprised when I heard that when I spoke to his agent. Um, I think Luvu, going back to his time with the Jets, but now with the Panthers for the last number of years, I think he's a really multidimensional player. He can play off the ball. He can rush the quarterback. He's athletic. He's got good size. I think he's a really good good player and when i say that i mean i'm not saying he's roquan smith or or nick bolton but i think he's a really good player i mean he's a different player than blake cashman but i think they're they're both solid good linebackers that can help a team um so i luvu is another guy i've always liked when it comes to queen queen really up until this year was a little bit up and down in his career. And there was a sense in the Ravens organization that depending on what he did this year, I mean, obviously they may not have enough money to re-sign him. I, I doubt that happens. You guys would know that better than I, because um, now he's probably going to command a decent amount of money because he had a really good season this year. Um, he was much a much more dominant player. He and Roquan Smith really worked well together. Um, you know, the question with Queen is, 
if if you view him as the guy, if you sign him to be sort of your number one linebacker, is he that guy? Or was he just really good this year because he was part of a really well-schemed, really good defense with a lot of good players, including a, a linebacker and Smith, who most would probably say is better than Queen. Um, but uh, but he's clearly had a really good season and he's very athletic. He moves well, can play every snap. Um, you know, they were not really a dime team because they did not want to take Queen and Smith off the field. So Queen played pretty much every snap. Yeah, a couple things here. So, yeah, with Queen, it's it's going to be a big deal. Um, we'll see, Louisville, again, it's it's very early. I mean, we're we're not even yeah. at, the, at the point where teams offer contracts. But the cool story about Louisville is he was cut twice by the Jets. He was an undrafted free agent in 2018. It, they just didn't have a role for him. Uh, so he moved on, and he got a chance to play with Carolina, and he made the most of it. A former undrafted free agent, by the way, out of, I think, Washington State, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He shows up on great... tape, Adam. He shows up right? on tape. Yeah, a great effort, right? Yeah. A great effort. Um, better athlete than story. better athlete than people think. I mean, not an elite okay. athlete, but a better athlete than than people might think. Nice. All right, let's um, also talk about someone else, Greg, who might be on the move and maybe not a household name, but I know some people like this guy. Uh, he's from the Titans, Aziz Al Shahir. Hopefully, I pronounced Al Shire. That. Al Shire. Al Shire. Aziz Al Shire. What do you like, or what do you, what could you say about? Well, He's a, he's another one of those solid players. In other words, you know, if you sign him, you know, you he can play pretty much every snap. But you know, he's I would not like him personally as much as I would like Luvu or Cashman. But Al Shayer, when he was with the 49ers, uh, he was the third linebacker. So when the Niners played base, he was the third linebacker with Warner and Greenlaw. When they played nickel, he was not on the field. Now Tennessee signed signed him. Um, and obviously, Tennessee, their whole season kind of fell apart a little bit, but he pretty much played every snap for them. Um, I don't know if he's that guy. You know, he may be more of a base defense linebacker. Um, you know, you think of, look, Vic Fangio was just in uh, Miami. You know, uh, you you know, he's not your own Baker. Baker is, is a better athlete. Um, so, you know, look. We know that the Eagles, I'm not saying they're looking bottom in the barrel. Obviously, they're not going to think that way. They're not going to think whoever they look to sign, let's go sign a guy we don't really like or a bad guy. It all just depends on, on the, the the allocation of resources. Mm -hmm. um, and it would strike me that Al Shair would probably not, dem not get, he can demand a lot, they all do, but not get um, you know, as much as some of the other guys and, and could easily be available for a one or two year deal. So, so the next guy is a guy who did start for Fangio, and he's been a starter for a while. That's Josie Jewell. Ah, yeah, what a name, Josie Jewell. What are your thoughts on him, Greg? Another, I like Josie Jewell. I remember watching him at Iowa. Your typical Iowa linebacker, you know, tackling machine, safeties <laughs> and linebackers at Iowa. Yeah, um, but um, Josie Jewell is a little better athlete than people might think. He's been a starter in this league. Um, He's he's another, you know, it's funny, we're talking about all these guys that are, you know, sort of, and the reason they hit free agency is because they're not special players, but they're solid. So the question is, when you only have, I know the cap went up, but you still are dealing with a finite amount of resources to allocate, and normally stack backers don't fall into the category of let's allocate a ton of money. Every once in a while that happens, like Edmonds in Chicago last year, you know, he's a two, very toolsy guy uh, and kind of a rare guy given his size and movement. So, you know, that's one thing. Um, but all these other guys that we're speaking about now, they're really solid players. Um, you know, I'm not sure, Jewel, you want him playing in your nickel. Um, Denver uh, played nickel. He did play when they played dime. He did not play. Believe it or not, our old friend Alex Singleton was their dime linebacker. Wow. But Jewel came off the field. Um, but he he's a really good run defender. Now, there's a guy that sees things really well. That's his game. He sees it. He gets it. Um, better athlete, as I said, than than some might think. Another just really solid football player. He cool. does turn 30 in December, so age ah, is going to be a factor. Already? Where Isn't is that it? crazy? Where yeah. does the yeah. time? Remember watching him, uh, and you might remember this, Jeff. I remember watching him against Penn State, yes. and he had an unbelievably great game, and he even matched up to Barkley a couple of times on routes and yep. actually looked pretty good doing it. Mm. Yes. You probably remember that because I know you watch all the Penn State games. 100%. Um, yeah, but Josie Jules, he's a good football player. God, I can't believe he's going to be 30 years old. I know.
Greg, here's a guy that we're going to talk about who, man, early in his career looked like he was going to be a superstar, but this past season and even the season before, he either got his playing time reduced or last season he got benched for a short period of time. That's Devin Whitey, former first round yeah. for the Bucks. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm just going by tape. I, yep. I, I'd i kind of stay away from Devin White. I mean, I think that he's a splash player, still makes some plays here and there. Um, I, you know, you could tell that in, in Tampa, they they kind of felt like either he was declining or just wasn't as good, whatever the reason. But um, he's more of a blitzer. That's the way he kind of has been used the last couple of years. That he is very good at. Um I don't think he's a really good stacked backer in the sense of, you know, playing the run, playing in pass coverage. I think he's a blitzer at this point. Um, so, you know, again, now you get down to what do you want, you know, what do you want your linebackers to be? And my guess is that would not fit the Eagles system right now. Greg, a guy I could see the Eagles being interested in because I know that we know they were interested in him last year. He actually turned down an offer to go play for the chiefs and had a nice little season for them is drew tranquil. Oh, he's a really good player. Can you talk about how he might or might not uh, based on your evaluation fit into a Vic Fangio style defense? If you see it that way, I think tranquil fits anywhere and not, not because he's the best linebacker in the league, right. but I just think, you know, his traits, he's, he's really smart. He's really aware. Um, you know, obviously, when you play for Steve Spagnola, you do blitz. So, you know, so he can do that well. Um, I think, you know, we spoke about Cashman, Jewel, Murray, you know, Tranquil, he's he might be the number one guy in that regard. I mean, just as a really solid player, um, I'd be very curious. And I guess, as, as you guys were mentioning, we'll find out early in the process Um but, you know, normally stack backers don't garner a ton, as we said. So, you know, he may not sign the first day or two, but he could. I mean, he could be one of those guys. But I think Tranquil is a really good player. And I know that Kansas City was thrilled to have him because Bolton got hurt and missed a bunch of games. Gay got hurt and missed a little time. And they were thrilled to have Tranquil because he is a really good football player. He's he's kind of a complete multidimensional player. Um, I was actually surprised when the Chargers kind of let him go. I think he's a good player. So, Greg, if you're a team that's looking for a three-down linebacker, is that something you could see out of him? Yes, for sure. I think he is a three-down back. Adam, I'm, not sure you'd look at, I'm not sure if you'd look at Josie Jewell that way. I think Cashman can do that, but Tranquil's better. Do you think he may have, Adam, just based on your sense, because he played so well for the Chiefs in the national spotlight that he may have played himself into more than just your one-year deal? Like, do you think he can probably – what was his age again? I think he's still under 30, correct? 29. Yeah, he's 29. 29. It, it's so not about – I mean, it, it, it's – yeah, again, it's really structure. The years aren't the big deal. It's 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 how many – because he was hurt. He de dealt with some injuries early in his career. Lately, he's been healthy. But he was basically going to be a backup for them. Right. Got, as Greg said, he got pressed in the service. It, it's not a it's not a big deal. He's 29 years old. Good football player, pretty good athlete. Uh boy, if you look at this list, there are a lot of mid-level free agents. And even yeah. Kenneth Murray was an underachiever. So I'll be interested to see what uh what he commands. I mean, Kenneth Murray's the, the best athlete and the best yeah. physical specimen in this group. Uh so again, as we mentioned when we spoke about him, Jeff, you mm -hmm. know, somebody thinks, hey, I can really get out of Kenneth Murray what's there, what's in his body. You know, again, he's not signing a four or five year deal at a ton of money, but he could be seen as the the number other than Queen, you know, as mm -hmm. as the, the number one guy because uh, it is there in his body. The, the so, most consistent player out of this list is Louvo, who it's not I could see him getting two years of fully guaranteed money. Frank Cole one year. Uh Devin Whitefrey. I mean, this Greg just outlined. I mean, here's a guy that is just not playing at a high enough level. Now Murray's Murray's a fascinating player because man, if yeah. he could ever put it together. Well, well yeah. let's talk. Let's quickly talk about the traits that we should look for. I don't mean athletic traits. I mean, linebacker traits for this defense. And, and again, Vic Fangio could do something differently. It's not like he's been the same guy throughout his career. But what we know of Fangio over the last few years is that he's not going to blitz a whole lot. Right. Um, it's not like he looks for linebackers who are going to have your, you know, six to eight uh, sacks a year. He, he plays a lot of zone. So you're looking for an athletic linebacker who knows how to take drops, who has good spatial awareness, who has good athleticism side to side, Greg. I mean, is that, is that sort of a fair assessment? Yeah. Well, what? 
you know, one of one of his key principles in zone coverage is what they call match carry deliver. Right. And you know, so your linebackers have to be really good at understanding routes, understanding splits, understanding when to you know when to match, how far to carry, when to deliver. Yep. You know, it's a mental game. It's yep. all a mental game. Um, and which I, again, I don't want people to think that doesn't mean you need good physical traits, but. But my guess is that those kinds of traits would be more important to Vic Fangio than just, wow, he's a great athlete. Right. Uh, you know, because that's, look, you know, one of the things, and I, and I had some really great conversations with defensive coaches at the Combine, because I was really curious, and I had my own sense of it, you know, from watching tape, but, you know, these guys are smarter than I am. So I had some great conversations about, you know, the 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 quarter structure and why more and more teams are doing it. And, you know, so linebackers become really important in that because you know when you because when you play zone like that it, there's a lot of man principles but there's a that's why it's match carry deliver it's, it's kind of you know quarters coverage is really man with rules you know mm -hmm. so there's a lot of rules and you have to be able to understand those and execute execute those rules sure i know landmarks have you know players always talk about landmarks where knowing where to be anymore. at the time to be there yeah, you don't the the, the the landmark concept, which became so big back in the '90s with Tony Dungy with Cover Two, mm -hmm. um, and even with Cover Three for years. But sort of the landmark principle is not as big now because you don't want guys just dropping back and staring at the quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, you need them to react to routes. You need to match routes, pass That's on routes, happen. understand splits of receivers. You know, I mean, when it's three by one, what what are the tendency of, of route concepts and combinations when it's two by two? What are they? You know, so there's a lot more involved now. And you and your linebackers and it's certainly in a Vic Fangio defense, not the only defense like this, but certainly in his where you really need your linebackers to be aware of how to do all this or you kind of you kind of get screwed. It, one more thing before we move on. Tranquil played when he's playing with the Chargers. They moved to more of a Fangio style defense two years ago. Um, so with on a brand Staley, so that there, there yeah. might be a match there on, on, on that. Principle. Just in terms of understanding methodology, terminology. Yes. Yeah. I remember talking out. to Chargers about that. Yeah. That, that's what they told me that they were moving towards yeah. that. That was, that was sort of the trend. And uh, anyway, so yeah, this is a, it's a kind of an interesting list, you know, it may not be the superstar list, but there's, there's talent here. There, there yeah, are... I'm, what I'm real curious about, and then we'll find out early, Jeff, as you've mentioned is, you know, the guys that might be considered, hey, we want to go get this guy or, you know, hey, let's wait. And three weeks later or four weeks later, we can sign this guy. And even though he's a good player, you know, we don't have to give him a long term deal for a lot of money. Yes. History says that would option B is the, the route right. the Eagles will go. But again, uh, well, for the Eagles, different, that, that yes. Yeah. yeah. Different coordinator. And, and the big and the big question, I think, um, and you guys know this better than I, is Nicobe Dean. I mean, number one, can he play? because he's been injured and what is he as a player we don't really know that mm -hmm. you know just because he played at georgia there's this sense that man if he plays he's great we don't know that you know so he's kind of the elephant in the room right now do you think it matters with the kobe dean greg when they're in their base run defense which you know could be five two it could be could be four two at times you know even if right. it could be a nickel but expecting the run what he's one of the two stack backers on the field does it matter if he's considered weak side or Mike to you, as far as the volume and the punishment on his body in that regard? Um, you know, again, I don't know all the details of how that's coached. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're going to play a five, two front as your base, you're going to have two stacked backers. Now you start getting into the, the, the lining up of the front, what the offense looks like, what's considered the strength of the offense. Would he be considered, you know, the mic in which case he'd line up probably to the passing strength or, or, or the running strength, depending on how you map it out. Um, you know, you're, you get into all those issues. So I don't know how Vic Fangio and staff would view N'Kobe Dean if he's indeed healthy and can line up and play, but he'd be a stack backer. You know, it's right. just now you get into all those, those nuances and details. I don't know how they would see that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, last thing, let's wrap it. There, there's two Cleveland linebackers, one of them who just jumps out to me a little bit. Uh, Sione Takitaki and Jacob Phillips. Any of them, based on the traits we discussed, the the football IQ to play in the Fangio defense, stick out to you as potential Phillips, is, is, good fits? Phillips, the LSU kid. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, was he LSU? Was it LSU? 
Was I'll Philip tell you in a you kid? Uh, or am I wrong on? LSU, you're correct. No, you're correct. Yeah, LSU. Yep. He's then. Then I remember him. I couldn't. Yeah, I just had to kind of get hurt a lot, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger kid. Um, I think he's pretty much a a base defense linebacker. Okay. You know, he, you you wouldn't play him in your subs. Um, you know, because he's a bigger kid and he's he's more of a run defender than than anything else. Um, he certainly is going to be a one-year deal guy. I mean, no one's going out and signing him to a long-term deal. Taki Taki played in their base in Cleveland. He did he, he did end up playing in the nickel uh, because of injuries, I believe, because of Anthony Walker getting hurt quite a bit. So Taki Taki. So he has experience playing in both. But when all the linebackers were healthy, he was not in, in the sub defenses. Um, right. He had to because of injury. Um, so my guess is he'll be seen more as a base defense linebacker and not as a sub defense linebacker. Well, there's definitely a lot of base defensive guys who are out there. If the Eagles are just looking to find somebody to pair with well, the right now, they need to line then... up people's Jeff. right yeah, now. I know. <laughs> I mean, if they had a game tomorrow, we don't even know who they'd line up. That's a great point, Greg. That is a great point. Hey, I do want to ask you this before we close out. I know we keep saying this, but I would like um, your assessment. I know he only played one game for the Eagles. Well, started one game or played in it against the Giants. But Ben Van Sumeren is a guy who's going to get a little bit of a look. And I, I do recall, I thought you kind of liked his tape I liked him. against the Giants. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I thought in that one game, he played as well as any Eagles linebacker this year in that one game. Wow. Now, maybe that's not a high bar. I mean, <laughs> It, True. It may not, and I, I didn't say that to be sarcastic. We know sure. Nick Morrow, we, we, you know, Nick Morrow is not very good. Um, but um, I, I kind of like what I saw. Um, mm -hmm. The guy's a really good athlete. I, he's got some twitch and suddenness to him. Obviously, he would need to play more to gain, you know, more recognition skills. Um, but and I'm sure, you know, that would be viewed, you know, potentially as an issue. Again, new system now. Who who knows? You know, but the guy's a really higher level athlete when he when he sees it he goes um you know I, I thought that game in which he played I thought he he played pretty well I, I liked what I saw in that one game interesting well he'll definitely be in the mix to at least be competing out there uh for linebacker for the Eagles this season so we will see what happens with that that's going to do it for this episode of the intel with Greg Gosell as we wrap up Eagles defensive free agency or NFL defensive free agency. We've done edge rushers. We've done defensive backs and this completes defense with our look at linebackers in our next episode. We will talk about offensive skill position players, quarterbacks, what running backs, wide receivers with Greg, and that will finish our NFL pre agent free agency part of the Intel with Greg Cosell. And then after that, we start getting into NFL draft preview. So for Adam Kaplan, I'm Jeff Mosher and for Greg Cosell, You've been watching the Intel with Greg Cosell.